Hi everybody, it's your digital technology librarian, Christy, here with you. Uh, it is Friday, so you know what that means. It means we have yet another Film Rec Friday read ready for you. Um, with school really just around the corner for so many people, whether it be virtually, home-based, or in person, I thought this week it would be really nice to sort of... Uh, turn our eyes to a lot of stories that have to do with education of some kind. Um, so that means I picked uh, a lot of great stories that have to do with either, you know, high school, college, tutoring, um, and education through all ages. So um, if you do like school stories, please do check these out. Uh, as with every week, all of our recommendations are available for free to any Mylan Berlin Library card holder uh, via one of our three video services, which are Clevenet Overdrive, Hoopla Digital, and Canopy. Uh, so again, if you have our card, please, please, please visit one of these sites. Um, there are so many great uh, options on there, uh, be it for books and audio books, videos, downloadable videos, uh, or even music. So. Anyone who is a fan of extremely wonderful stories, you'll be able to find something on one of those services. Uh, so with no further ado, let's go ahead and get started on those recommendations. So as usual, our first three recommendations all come from our Clevenet Overdrive service. And the very first of those is actually for an anime series uh, called Super Gals. Now, the entire first season is available on Overdrive, and it's a really, really quick watch. Uh, it's great for teens through adult audiences. Uh, probably even preteens would be okay. And it follows these three uh, young school-aged girls uh, as they go through these misadventures in their day-to-day -day life. It's really quite a slice of life story, but it's funny and there's lots of little adventures going on. Each of the girls has a really distinct personality. So even if you're not drawn to like the super outgoing, overly energetic, zany kind of character, uh, that's just one of those girls, uh, which is one of, one of the things I really liked about this series. It's got like a rather introverted character as well. Uh, and, and you can relate to all of them, whether or not you're, you know, an INFP from Myers-Briggs or, or whatever kind of personality type, you'll see yourself in all of those girls. Um, and the antics they have are all, for the most part, pretty light and fluffy. It's, it's just one of those things that's bright and colorful and enjoyable. It's not like super deep and it's not going to make you, you know, think existential thoughts, but it is going to be a fun 20 minute watch when you just want to relax at the end of the day. So if you're looking for something like fun, zany, wacky, um, Super Gal season one is available on Overdrive. It's a lot of fun. Check it out. Especially uh, if you're a fan of anime. It's, it's a good, it's a really, really good series. Now, another one of my recommendations is for the classic film, The Little Princess, uh, starring Shirley Temple. Uh, so obviously this is quite an old, uh, old movie, but it's really pretty much a timeless sort of story. Um, I have always been a big fan of uh, Frances Hodgson Burnett's book. And while the Shirley Temple adaptation isn't um, word for word, uh, a corollary. It is pretty close in feeling and vibe. Uh, the story takes place, uh, in a young girl's boarding school. Uh, Shirley Temple's character is left in the care of this boarding school when he has to go on a trip to India, uh, for business. And, it's a lot to do with her character's interaction with the other girls at the boarding school, as well as her interactions with the teaching staff. Um, there's some pretty dark moments considering it's a Shirley Temple movie, uh, which I do appreciate that they kept at least that part of the original storyline, uh, true. So, uh, it's, it's really quite a moving coming of age tale. So, if you are a fan of classic films uh, and you like a lot of that sort of layered drama with girls schools because there's a lot of that going on uh, definitely check out the little princess uh, it's a classic and it's really really wonderful so 
please do check that out. Now, my last story uh, that I wanted to recommend from Clevenet is Pygmalion. Now, if you are familiar with My Fair Lady, the film uh, starring Audrey Hepburn, you already are sort of at least a little bit familiar with the story of Pygmalion, uh, where Eliza Doolittle, uh, a cockney flower seller, uh, is taken under the wing of and tutored by this well-regarded uh, speech expert and he turns her life around simply by teaching her how to speak correctly and over the course of that the two of them sort of uh, develop a relationship and it's and uh, Pygmalion is the uh, non-musical version of this story uh, it's the so uh, of course it's like the original uh, sort of telling. And this is the filmed adaptation. It was originally applied by George Bernard Shaw. Um, Pygmalion stars Leslie Howard as uh, the professor, and he does such a good job of seemingly being overwhelmingly uptight uh, and very correct and very proper. And it's really fun to watch how this girl from nowhere really turns his life around uh even while he's sort of pressing down and trying to to change her so much she's actually changing him just as much if not more uh it's a lovely love story uh a love story that's not a love story at the same time uh but uh, if you like those sort of classic tales uh sort of distanced romance, very British, very upstairs, downstairs, please do check out Hygmalion. The, the performances are lovely and um, it really is one of my favorite stage plays and this adaptation is is really great as well. So um, if you do like the classics, check out Pygmalion on Overdrive. You won't regret it. It's marvelous. Moving on to our Hoopla digital recommendations. My first one is a biggie. Um, it's for one of my favorite movies, which is a totally silly, ridiculous film, but it's also really wonderful and I never get tired of watching it. And that movie is Legally Blonde. Um, Elle Woods starts out as quite a vapid character. Um, she was just this sort of sorority princess whose primary goal was to marry her frat boy boyfriend. And her life gets turned upside down when that doesn't pan out. And she ends up applying to and getting accepted into Harvard Law School. It's a total fish out of water story and it's surprisingly so full of heart. I mean, you can't help but have warm fuzzies after watching it. And Reese Witherspoon as the lead as Elle is so wonderful. She, this, she, I'd never been a particularly big fan of hers prior to this. She'd been in a ton of other films, but uh, after watching this, I was a huge fan. She really gives this character that seems so shallow so much more depth. Um, and there are elements of romance in it, but that's really not at all the, the main thrust of the film. The main thrust of the film is Elle learning how to be confident in her own intelligence, uh, because prior to, you know, her going off to school to really focus on this career, she'd only had this one particular goal, uh, and, and watching her learn how capable she is, uh, is really, really fun to watch. And, and it's full of humorous, ridiculous moments. And that still never totally pulls you out of the movie. I mean, there's this like one sort of slight musical number and it's still pretty in keeping with the whole vibe of the series of the film. So, um, if you get the chance, make sure you check out Legally Blonde. Uh, the third film, which is about not Elle Woods, but a, a set of twins is also available on Hoopla. Um, to be honest, I've not seen it, but if you liked Legally Blonde and you want to sort of continue on with this series, there's at least one more part of the series that is available through it. So Legally Blonde, Reese Witherspoon. Make sure you check it out if you've never checked it out. Revisit it if you haven't seen it in a while. It's as funny and fun as you remember it being, I'm sure. 
my second recommendation on Hoopla is for sort of a silly, ridiculous film as well uh, called Born Yesterday. It's actually a remake of a classic film. Uh, the, and this remake stars Don Johnson, Melanie Griffin, Griffith, and um, John Goodman. Uh, the story centers around uh, this character, Billy, who is airheaded. She's an ex-showgirl. She has very little educational background. She goes to D.C. with her big business boyfriend, who is played by John Goodman, who plans to wheel and deal some really vital uh, situations in the next couple of weeks. Uh, needless to say, it's another fish out of water situation. Billy does not do well at parties. People make fun of her because she says things that have nothing to do with politics or she misunderstands a lot of things that are currently being talked about. And to avoid having her make him look bad, uh, Goodman's character hires Don Johnson's character to tutor her and to help her uh, get uh, savvy in political speech. Um, over the course of their lessons, they develop their own relationship. And it's... Again, one of those stories where it's as much about Billy learning to own her own intelligence as it is about any of the romances going on. She really comes into her own. The more that she learns, the more she realizes she's always been capable of learning and capable of doing, um, relying in, instead on other people. Uh, in the past has given her so many issues. So it, it's, it's really great to see her becoming so independent. And that's part of the fun. And it is also just sort of a weird, quirky, funny movie in a lot of places anyway. Um, there's one of my favorite scenes is where um, Billy teaches this group of politicos uh, about the amendments and how she's come up with her own little song and dance to remember all of the different uh, subtle changes within the amendments. And it's actually a pretty good song that I actually go through when I'm at like trivia events and things. I like hum it to myself. And I'm like, ah, I remember which one that one is um, when I seem to like have a blip and can't recall. So watch Born Yesterday, a lot of fun, some solid performances from Griffith Johnson and Goodman. Goodman is always awesome in anything he does. I love him. Um, but it is a very entertaining movie. Uh, if you get the chance, watch the original. Also a phenomenal, phenomenal film. Uh, in truth, probably even stronger than, say, the remake. But uh, again, remake, excellent, on Hoopla Digital. Check it out. And my last one from Hoopla um, is a classic teen film, at least from my teen years. Uh, She's All That. It's a Cinderella story that's not. Uh, Freddie Prince Jr. plays the lead guy. He's like the most popular guy in school. He makes a bet that he can change um, the school's like big art nerd into, you know, a Cinderella. And, uh, along the lines, of course, falls in love with her. This is how all it's, it's a very predictable film, but it is, um, surprisingly a lot of fun. I also love that she's an art nerd specifically. It's not that she's like some brainiac, but she has this niche that she fits in and she really is very passionate about the art and you don't see, the, uh, that aspect of things happening a lot in the teen films, at least not in the ones that were from the nineties and my teen years in particular. Um, it is just as fluffy and silly as I recalled it, uh, but it is definitely worth a watch. It's uh, lighthearted and fun, and they do have very good chemistry. Uh, you have some standard tropes that are always fun to see happening, like the nerd, the unattractive specifically nerd, uh, who simply takes off her glasses and changes her hair, and then she's like the new most popular girl in school. Uh, that's pretty much a standard trope for the 90s teen films. Uh, but it works well here. Uh, and the story sort of is self-aware enough that it makes fun of those moments, uh, which is a lot of fun. So please do check out She's All That. Uh, a very typical but very enjoyable teen uh, romance film. 
My very last film recommendation comes from our canopy service, of course, and that film is called Lady Bird. Um, Lady Bird is from a couple of years ago. It's a phenomenal coming of age story that follows the title character, Lady Bird, as she navigates her very last few months as a high schooler. Uh, she lives in Sacramento, California, uh, which she describes as being devoid of all culture. Uh, and she wants to go to the East Coast, some preppy cultural uh, school, as long as it's primarily far away from her parents, primarily her mother, uh, who she has a very contentious relationship with. And um, the story sort of follows her and through these last few months uh, where she's trying to make significant changes to herself. Uh, and she, in the course of that, you know, shifts through different friendships and relationships in her life. She gets a boyfriend, loses a boyfriend, finds another boyfriend, loses another boyfriend, loses friends, gain friends. You know, it's really, you know, when, when you talk about coming of age stories, we really do mean stories where you're sort of figuring out who you are and what you want. And this absolutely does that. And Shirsei Ronan, who plays the title character, is fantastic in it. You know, it's easy to watch films like this and not really like those characters uh, because they're shifting so much and they don't know who they are yet, you know, and, and a lot of times it's easy just to feel sort of ambivalent about them, or at least that's how I feel when I watch a lot of these stories. But despite the fact that she does some pretty questionable things, you still root for her. You still want her to succeed in finding what she wants and getting what she wants. Um, there's some fantastic performances. Her mother is played by Lori Metcalf and she's amazing in this. Uh, she and Lady Bird just cannot, they just don't speak the same language anymore. Um, she's trying to keep the family afloat and she finds it absolutely ludicrous that the daughter has no gratitude for it. The daughter just wants to run off to some expensive school far away uh, and she just can't understand. Whereas Lady Bird can't understand how her mother just doesn't get that she needs to not be in this closed unit anymore. She really needs to get away and, and then figure out who she is. Uh, and that's a really pivotal part of the story, the two of them, and how they are constantly clashing, uh, which I think is a relationship that a lot of people can relate to. Um, as I mentioned, Lady Bird has a couple of relationships in this last short period of time, and, you know, they're very much learning experiences for her. Um, she figures out what true friendship really means in the course of these storylines as well, and, you know, whether the performances are coming from younger actors or from, you know, seasoned pros, they're all so solid. Uh, and that in part, I believe, is due to Greta Gerwig's direction. Greta Gerwig more recently did the Little Women adaptation. She very clearly knows what she wants to get out of her performers. And this movie 100% uh, shows that in every single scene. You know, they're so carefully curated. Anyway, um, if you're looking for a coming of age story, a great drama about the relationships between a child and her parents or a child and her friends, uh, I cannot recommend Lady Bird enough. Performances are wonderful. The storyline is great, uh, highly recommended, and it's available on our canopy service. So please do check it out. Now that's all of my recommendations for this week. As always, Please let us know what you're watching. If you're see, watching something that you think other people would love, recommend it yourself down in the comments. We'd love to hear about it. I love watching good movies, so I'm always looking for recommendations myself. Um, and with that, I will wish everyone a really great weekend, and we'll see you next week, okay? Bye.